To anyone who is listening in, some of you didn't have a choice. <laughs> um, my name is Holly of Hair by Holly. Um, welcome, thank you for coming along to our lovely show today. It's been a nice little turnout, and I've had the chance to talk to lots of beautiful brides to be, um, so that's always wonderful. It's what we hope for. Um, so, um, like I said, my name is Hair by Holly. I am a bridal hair up artist. I am based in Whitchurch um, in Buckinghamshire, so about a 30 minute drive from here, so I'm nice and local. So why am I talking to you today? So I thought I'd come and have a little chat and just tell you how to start and then go through your bridal hair journey. It's really difficult because when you get married, sorry, when you get engaged, it's all really exciting. You've got lots of things to uh, think about, it's like a giant jigsaw, you need to put it all together and try and make it work for you. And it's the same with hair. You're looking at images, you're wondering, will your hair do that? What is my hair type? And you're looking at all these different types that you can have design-wise. So it can be really tricky, really, to start that journey. So how do you start? The best place to start, I always find, and I always say to all of my brides, is start just by looking at images. Clear your mind. Stop worrying about whether your hair will do it, or your hair's difficult, and all these concerns especially us women have about our hair. And just start saving, whether that's on Pinterest, whether that's going on to Google Images, and just saving photographs. And you will actually start to find that there will be a common theme to the images that you've started to save. Once you've come away from that and then go back to that mood board or whatever it is, however you've created it, you'll start to find that perhaps you've saved images that are Perhaps they all have plaits in them, perhaps it's all very curly, perhaps it's quite straight and structured. And they will start to form a picture of actually the kind of thing you like without actually realising that is what you're drawn towards. So that is a really good place to start. From this point, you can then start to try and find your bridal hair art artist. The reason I would suggest doing it this way around is because then you can start to find the supply that actually reflects the style that you've been looking for. So for myself, I particularly specialise in vintage and boho styles. Um, so although I do, of course, styles from across the board, but if that is something that you are particularly looking for, if those images are all starting to look very soft and tasseled and all those things, then you'll perhaps look at my portfolio um, because it blends itself to what you like. So when you find that hair artist, no, in fact, I'll go back a little bit. How do you find that hair artist? So there's lots of different ways. So today is a really good example. Coming to wedding fairs, um, come and meet your suppliers. It's a really good way to not over, only look at their portfolios, but also to kind of gauge what sort of person they are and um, how they work and what their service offers. Um, you can do, uh, you can ask your venue, for example. Most venues do have a recommended suppliers list, which is really good. So they'll have people who um, their brides would say, yes, I've had a really great experience with that person. Um, so it's really worth asking your venue to see whether they do that for you. You, of course, then have your wedding and bridal search engines. So that's places like Confetti, um, Bridebook. Um, myself, I'm a Rock My Wedding uh, recommended supplier. Um, so blogs and um, search engines like that are really great as well. Word of mouth is absolutely invaluable. So if you've had a friend who got married and whatever their supplier was, they'll say, yes, they were great, I loved them, they turned up on time, they promised everything, and they delivered everything. So word of mouth is also really important. Um, so you found that person and you think, great. You've looked at their portfolio, you're happy with their work, they're in your local area, tick, and they're available on your date, tick. All really important things. It's no good finding someone who lives five hours away, unless you want a really, really early start to your wedding morning. <laughs> um, so the next thing to look at is reviews. Reviews are really important because anyone can have some really great imagery um, through doing photo shoots or things like that, but it's really important actually that their service delivers to real brides on their day and to get an idea of what the experience has been like for those brides, you can go on to whether it's their social media, which is another good place to find um, suppliers, um, and you can look at their reviews on their 
their Facebook usually have a review section. Also on their websites, go through, see what other brides are saying about your supplier. It really is important. These people are the people who you're going to have on your wedding day, who you are going to spend time with and who you're going to share your vision with. So it really is very important that you click with that person and you'll get a good idea of that, whether you're talking to your supplier on the phone or um, in Messenger or on an email, you will get an idea of whether you have a good click with them and that's really something very important. So you've got a great portfolio, you've got great reviews and you're happy with um, your chat with them and your clicking with them. So they're all really great places to start. So we've checked their availability and we've checked that they're in our area, which is great. So what's the next step with booking your hair up artist? Well, usually there is a deposit made. So that just means that there is um, security on both ends. For myself, I know that my bride definitely wants that date and I can then give her my absolute full attention. That's really important. And also I can take your date off of uh, other dates that brides can book so you're not disappointed. Um, so once the uh, deposit is made, it's then the exciting and creative time because we start looking at booking in your trial and we start sharing um, your dream ideas. So on the lead up to your trial, um, it would be normal for us to have a lovely discussion about your wedding, your type of wedding, um, and then we would share those images that you saved back when you first started looking for your artist. And so I can start to gauge what the sort of styles are that you like, what kind of person you like, what your venue is like, and of course, most importantly, what your dress is like. Um, your dress is really important to perhaps how you'd like your hair to be. You've got a very detailed back, you want to make sure you show that off when we don't cover it up. So, um, as far as booking a date for your trial, I would say generally around six months before your special day is about right. You want to make sure you've chosen your dress, um, you're around looking at the time as well for your makeup artist, which is really good. We want to know what your hair length is. There's no point having your child two years before you get married because your hair length is going to change, your colour is probably going to change as well. And most importantly, your ideas are probably going to change as well. Pinterest is um, one of those places that can become quite dangerous after a while. Sometimes you just have to leave it. So we've looked at your trial, so um, we've looked at your images. So for your actual trial, there's some really nice things to consider. Beforehand, based on what we've discussed, we would have already decided whether you need to bring anything extra with you. So whether that's um, some extra extensions, which sound really scary, they're really not. I direct you to exactly the places you need to go um, and how we would have discussed how we're going to sort of create that for you. So if you need to bring anything with you, you can. It's nice to consider who you're going to bring with you. So I see lots of mother of the brides, which is really nice. I see lots of bridesmaids, and it means that it's an experience. Um, because that's what you want. Your whole wedding is an experience. So you, you may as well enjoy all of those moments you get. So I have a purpose-built studio at home. So I have a lovely big comfy sofa and all those things that you hope uh, your loved ones can come up with on and have a cup of tea whilst you're having your trial. Um, other hair up artists, they would perhaps come to your home, which is also a really lovely way of doing it. So when you come along, where do we start? Well, we start talking about your designs, check if any ideas perhaps have changed, because that does happen. And then I can take a look at your hair type. Um, this is not something that I worry too much about because there are various ways of um, creating the look that you want with different hair types and lengths and it would have been something that we would have covered to some extent before um, we get a chance to meet face to face. So we set about creating. This time with your hair artist is really important. It matters that you trust them. It matters that you feel like they understand what it is that you want. For myself, I talk my bride through everything that I'm doing. So placement and things like that, what the front looks like is also really important to what the back looks like. We're going to also discuss perhaps, are you, are you going to have a veil? Are you going to have a hair piece? Maybe something sparkly, maybe flowers. Uh, florists can also make your hair pieces for you. So that's a lovely option. Um, sparkly hair pieces, some are made, um, and you can have them made uh, bespoke for you, which is also really lovely. So, they're all the things that we talk about once we've created your hair design. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about hair pieces because I've actually borrowed some gorgeous things from one of our suppliers today. Natalia, she's over in this direction and she's um, got some beautiful dresses that she uh, makes herself. Um, but she's also lent me some lovely things. So, 
when it comes to your design, we will talk about um, the different types of things you put in. So you can have a slide of something like this, uh, really beautiful. You can pop that in the side. There's different places you can put it, perhaps on, on the back in this direction um, for your veils, which is really pretty. Um, hair bands, of course, are really popular at the moment. So um, there are some little hair band styles as well here. Um, veils. So you get different types of veils. Why does this matter for your hair? Veils really matter for bridal hair. Um, the positioning of your veil, for example. Uh, this is a single tier veil. Look how beautiful it is. You get double, so perhaps if you were to wear your veil over your face, you'll actually need to have your veil placed at a higher point here so you get that lovely um, uh, effect with the veil being coming down and then going back up with the top of the arm. Um, single veils, like this one, they're great because they're generally quite fine, so you can actually see your hair design through the back. And you've got a little bit more option, um, better options with this. So you can either wear them down low, which is really beautiful, or put in the top of your hair design here as well. So there's lots of lovely things you've got. Do take them around with spice sticks, they're amazing. Very nice ladies as well. Um, so that is our veil placement and our lovely pretty things there. So, we've created your design, uh, we've got your veil and we've got your pretty hair pieces so we know exactly how it's going to look. So before you leave me, we then take some photographs because it's really important that we remember exactly what we've done and also you can then take those images away with you to your dress fittings um, and show you know, your other bridesmaids who couldn't make it or perhaps your mum um, so they can take a little look and, and you can share share what you're going to look like. There's something that really is quite strange with what happens with what I do. I get quite a lot of happy tears um, in my job um, because there is something about that end thing when the bride is sat there in the mirror and I place that veil in her finished hairdo. They get quite overwhelmed actually because they suddenly are looking at the face that they'll be seeing on their wedding day. It's, it's really quite a beautiful moment. So um, that's a really lovely so we've done your trial, which has all been fabulous, and um, there is of course then correspondence between me and my brides right up to their wedding day. So sometimes it's a little like, oh I've had this idea, what do you think? Or they haven't quite bought their veil or their hair piece yet, so they're going to send me things that they found and we can discuss those and whether they work for the design. And then the week leading up to the wedding, you'd hope to hear from all of your suppliers, everyone saying, hello, hope everything's okay, just to firm up details, and it's no different to uh, your hair designer either. So I would have checked in with you, made sure that everyone is lovely and happy. On the wedding morning itself, it's usually an early start. So some of my brides are a bit shocked. They've got five bridesmaids and the bride and we're going to start at seven in the morning. That is about normal. So try not to be too shocked when your hair apart says that to you. We want to make sure that your morning is really super relaxed. Um, that there's no rushing around, there's lots of things for us to fit around. So there is going to be a makeup artist perhaps, your photographer turns up with some particular sort of stage shots of you having your hair or makeup done. The groom comes, you know, sends a gift and everyone has to stop to all look at the gift. That happens quite a lot, one of my favourite moments. Um, so we want to make sure that everything flows and everything's relaxed. So you want to make sure that your hair artist gives you a really realistic time. They turn up on time, which is really good. You've looked at their reviews, so hopefully all those things are all good. Um, and then everything just sort of starts to come together. Um, your bridal hair up artist usually will come to you, which is exactly what you want. You don't want to be rushing around on the wedding morning. Um, and then the really important things. You're going to want someone who's going to be able to recreate you've had done in your trial. It sounds maybe a bit silly, but there is real art in that. Um, it is quite tricky, but um, good people can do it. So you want to make sure that um, you're going to be happy that your person's going to be able to do that for you. So they recreate your styles. Bridesmaids, I do see some bridesmaids sometimes for trials, it depends. Um, but usually I work blindly on the day and I think a lot of um, other hair artists do the same. We're sort of showing images, here you go, I would like this please, and that's absolutely fine. Um, we're always happy to do that. I've got a friend, look. It's my spotlight. <laughs> Um, so you want someone that's friendly and flexible in your morning to fit around all of those things and sensitive to your wedding morning vibe. You don't want somebody really loud and brash to turn up on your wedding morning perhaps if you're someone who's quite sensitive and want a nice quiet wedding morning. So that's all to do with finding the right supply for you, whoever that may be, um, for whatever it may be. 
So veil wise, um, I have different options for the veil in the morning. Some of my brides want to take their veils out later in the evening, which is um, something that happens quite a lot. So I usually pop the veil in afterwards, um, before I, uh, sorry, before I leave, and I usually show a member of the family, whoever's there, how to take it out. Um, and then sometimes I'll pop them in just before I leave, or I will show um, mother of the bride or whoever can be trusted how to put it in then once the bride is dressed. Um, and then I leave you to your fabulous day. So um, that's about it from me really. I hope I've covered some really good pointers um, on trying to find your bridal hair art artist, how to find your perfect design that's right for you, and also in general how to find fabulous suppliers, all of which are here. Um, and I hope you enjoy your day. Thank you very much.